So um, here's the official laws. These are the laws that were passed in this past uh, legislative session, the last 60-day session that was held between January and, and March of this past year. Um, that was passed by the, the first session of the 52nd legislature. And all of these are the, um, oh, excuse me, these, these are published and, and authenticated by the Secretary of State. The red books, I think a lot of you are still familiar with those, um, they include the compilation of these laws and every other law that the legislature has passed. Those are annotated and they are published under statutory authority. The compilation, the compilation of those is done uh, under the statutory authority uh, that, that Brenda mentioned. Uh, they're done under the supervision of the New Mexico Compilation Commission and the Supreme Court Advisory uh, Committee on the NMSA, the New Mexico Statutes Annotated. And one source. So these publications, whether you get them in hard copy or online or on the DVD, those are the only official sources of New Mexico law and compilation. And I'm going to talk about the law of the statutes because that's, that's what uh, we do. I'm uh, sorry, I didn't introduce myself at the beginning. Raul Burciaga, I'm the director of Legislative Council Service. Um, anything else you get is not official. It doesn't matter the source. It may be free. Uh, it may be a reputable source, and there's a lot of them out there. But it may not be current. And it certainly isn't authenticated. So if it's not one of these, then it's not official. So the question is, how does it become official? So let me give you some background. The Legislative Council Service is a bill drafting and legal research agency for the legislature. It's a non it's, excuse me, it's a nonpartisan and confidential agency of the legislature. We're there year round. Mostly we do uh, drafting of legislation uh, that consumes most of the end of the year throughout the session. And the rest of the time, we are staffing interim committees. We report to a 16-member body, the Legislative Council, that's co-chaired by the Speaker of the House of Representatives and the Senate, pro, Senate President pro tempore. Uh, and we work very closely with the Compilation Commission. The Compilation Commission uh, is made up of seven members. Uh, the Chief Justice, who also presides as the President of the Commission, the Attorney General, the uh, State Records Administrator, the Dean of the Law School, and the President of the New Mexico State Bar. Any of those can have or can I uh, designate somebody to act as, as his or her designee. The last two members are uh, the Clerk of the Supreme Court and myself as Director of the Legislative Council Service. And the Commission hires an Executive Director, Brenda. Now, the Commission's charge um, it's supposed to act on the advice and the approval of the advisory committee, the one that's appointed by the Supreme Court. And what it's supposed to do is provide for the official annotated compilation of the statutes, including the court rules, supplements to all of the compilations, and all other necessary things pertaining to the publication of any compilation and related publications. And as Brenda mentioned, it's an enterprise agency. It receives no general fund money. Um, I think... Uh, if you can go to, the, to our new website, Brad. Um, by the way, we're just uh, putting together a new website for the legislature. The old website and the new one will, be, will both be up and operational throughout the session. We won't go to the new website until after the session, hopefully to get people used to it. So if you follow the legislative process, there's a new website. It has everything the current one has and a few other enhancements and, and nice things to, uh, to use in terms of researching. So that's the new website. Um, as I mentioned previously, the council service is responsible for all of the bill drafting. And yes, we do use WordPerfect, and I gotta tell you, it works a thousand times better than, than, than uh, MS Word or any other uh, software pro uh, product right now. Now, I'm just gonna focus quickly and briefly to give you some background on how these become official. Uh, so I'll focus on just a bill that has passed both houses and is signed by the governor. If a bill gets through all of its committees, gets through both houses, it is sent to the enrolling and engrossing unit of the respective house in which the bill originated. So if it's a House bill, it goes to the E&E unit of the House, and if it's a Senate bill, obviously to the E&E, enrolling and engrossing unit of the Senate. And what E&E does is it removes all of the text in brackets and strike through and all of the underscoring, leaving only the text that creates a new law. Can you go to that? House 
Bill 91 from last year. There we go. If you can go up a little bit. So that, that's what the bill looks like when it gets introduced. And actually, this is a substitute, but it virtually is the same thing. Um, and I, I selected one that was quick and easy. Anything you see in brackets and a strike through, that's, that's uh, text that's to be deleted. Anything you see that's underscored is, um, is new uh, material. And then if you can go to the, the new one. So what e e does is it just takes out the deleted material, it takes out the underscoring, and just leaves what the new section looks like. And that is what gets delivered to the governor. And that's what the governor decides whether or not uh, she is going to sign or veto. So if it is signed, or if it is partially vetoed, and of course she can only do that on appropriating bills that are appropriating money, um, then it, the, it goes to the Secretary of State, and the Secretary of State assigns a chapter number. And if, if it's a full veto, if the entire bill is, is uh, vetoed, then there is no chapter number. It still goes to Secretary of State, but it doesn't go beyond that. So what the Compilation Commission does is that it publishes from that E&E &E copy that the governor has signed. Um, it's been proofread by the, by the originating legislative bodies I mentioned, the E&E &E unit of the House or the Senate. It's signed by the governor and is chaptered into law by the Secretary of State. Now prior to compiling, before the Compilation Commission takes that and puts it into the Red Books and one source, um, the uh, the lawyer editor that works for the Compilation Commission, Ralph Trujillo, that, that Brenda mentioned earlier, um, he reviews um, everything that's going into that. He reviews the table of changes, the compiler's notes. He also drafts the case and the ALR annotations. That's what the compilation has that nothing else has, and, and the free website doesn't have either. So then the Compilation Commission does its magic by publishing from a master XML database that gets exported uh, to the software that ultimately formats and publishes or produces a print version, which is then also exported into what you see online, either on your DVD if you have one of those, or online New Mexico OneSource. Now additionally, and, and Brenda mentioned some of this briefly, uh, the Compilation Commission also reviews New, New Mexico Supreme Court and Court of Appeals opinions upon release each week. Uh, those are added to the official New Mexico Statutes Annotated Database monthly, and those are exclusively available on onesource.com. Uh, the Compilation Commission also reviews federal court opinions uh, throughout the fiscal year uh, for case annotation as needed, and then notes whether a case uh, has been superseded by a more recent decision. I think Brenda mentioned that at the very end there. Um, and that's a fairly new feature. The, um, the print statutes are updated once a year. Those are expensive. And as Brenda mentioned, uh, there's no general fund money. So those are only updated once a year. One source is updated much more frequently. Now, let me move a little bit to the rules of construction. If you're familiar with uh, the legislative process and, and with legislation generally, if there is a new section of law being proposed, it's not on the books, it's a whole new section of law, then it, all it's going to have is something that says new material on it. And um, if that new section of law is passed and signed, then the Compilation Commission assigns a compilation number to it, chapter, article, and section. And then it's added to the compilation. It's either added as a new section of law, a standalone body of law, or it's, it may be a new section of an existing short titled act. However, if the proposed legislation calls for amending an existing section of law, the Constitution requires that that section, if it's going to be revised, amended, or extended in any way, that the entire section be set out in full. And that's why you see the strike through, the bracketing, and the underscoring. So what happens if that same section of law is stepped on, as we like to say, if it's amended in more than one bill, all of which pass, and are signed into the same session. Well, the Smith case is controlling on that. And this is a, a 2004 case, but it, it came about as a result of a, a bill, actually three bills that were passed in 2003. Um, the, um, during the 2003 session, the legislature amended a DWI section of law. 
uh, 66-8-102. It amended it three different times in three different bills. The governor signed all three bills on three different dates, and the bill had three different uh, effective dates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, the council service actually tries to get those pulled in together. <laughs> but if you've ever been around the session the last seven to 10 days, <laughs> trying to get three legislators in the same room at one time to uh, tell them to fix their bill is, is impossible. So these three bills get through. So what happened was that, sir, sure enough, there was a DWI case, and the attorney in that case argued that a lesser sentence should be imposed because, the uh, attorney argued, um, the enhanced sentence was nullified by one of the later enacted bills that retained the lesser sentence. Now, at that time, the statute stated that if more than one act amended the same section of law, the last act signed by the governor was presumed to be the law, but the other signed acts were to be included in the annotations. And again, they were, they were there. Um, now, the, uh, what, what that attorney failed to look at was in section 12-2A-10, there was a, uh, uh, the uh, Uniform uh, Rule and Statute Construction Act. I'm sorry, I don't have the exact uh, citation. But in that, <clears throat> it said that if statutes appear to conflict, they must be construed, if possible, to give effect to each. If the conflict is irreconcilable, the later enacted statute governs. But in this case, you could read all three uh, different bills and give effect to each. Are you on the 2003? Yes. So if you can go a little further down to the annotations, where it says 2000, yeah, right there. Okay, come down a little bit. No, I'm sorry, go back up a little, sorry. Where it says 2003 amendment. One more, just a little bit, there we go. So you'll notice there that the 2003 amendment um, was, that was uh, chapter 164, the, latest, the later enacted one. And um, below that are the other two, chapter 51 and chapter 90, which were done earlier. Uh, so all of those were in the compilation. It was in the annotations as the statutes called for that. But the argument the attorney was making was that because the other two were, were you know, you have to make the, the later one pre, uh, presumptive law because the other two, at least what they were arguing, was that they were uh, repealed by implication. But the court ruled, the Supreme Court ruled, that the language of the three enactments, in addition to the title and the purposes, indicated that the objective of the legislature was to make specific, independent improvements to the statute and permitted all three enactments to be construed harmoniously to give effect to each enactment. The court further ruled that in amending an existing law, the legislature was required to set out the section in full, as I mentioned earlier, Article 4, Section 18 of the Constitution. The courts are not obligated to read into that legislative act a repeal by implication of other legislation passed but signed earlier in the same session. Still, the court recognized that you could have situations where there was going to be a conflict. Um, so if the court recognized that, and so where amendments to the same section of law may conflict, if you're faced with the appearance of a conflict, the Compilation Commission is instructed to, um, is instructed to compile the last act signed by the governor as presumptive law. In most cases, that presumption will prevail, yet in lit limited circumstances it may not. And all of the sections that amend this, excuse me, all of the acts that amend the same section of law are to be compiled and placed in the annotations. So I, I think the Smith case is probably one of the most important uh, recent cases on statutory construction in recent history. And I, and I will tell you, I'm a little surprised at how many attorneys aren't aware of that because we do get questions at the council service, our library gets questions, our drafters get questions, legislators ask questions um, about this, this phenomenon. So um, the, um, the legislature went a little further. Uh, the, the, it took a few years, but uh, we were struggling with the fact that you could presume all of them to be good law, 
but they were hidden in the annotations. So in the public website, it wouldn't have that. It wouldn't have those annotations. So in 2013, the legislature passed a law, and that allows for multiple amendments of the same section of law to be reconciled and compiled. So now you, can't, you don't have to go to the, to the, um, to the uh, compilation. We're in the process, well, I should say the Compilation Commission is in the process of updating all of that. But basically, 1218, the Rules of Construction Governing Compilation, says that if two or more acts during the same session amend the same section of the NMSA and the Compilation Commission, after consultation with a Legislative Council service, uh, determines that the provisions of one or more of the earlier signed acts can be reconciled, then those provisions shall be incorporated into the last signed act and compiled in the NMSA. Uh, the history, the annotations uh, following the section shall, are still going to set forth the section, chapter, year of all of the acts amending that particular section, including the annotations setting forth the nature of the difference between the acts or sections, if any. Um, Sometimes that, that's going to require uh, renumbering or relettering of sections, subsections, paragraphs, and subparagraphs, but those are, are, are minor. None of the, the, uh, the substantive law changes, it just gets incorporated in. Mm -hmm. Now, by the same token, if, if two or more acts amend the same section of law and they cannot be reconciled, the legislation still says that the last act signed by the governor shall be presumed to be the law. And again, the annotation should include everything uh, that was passed during that session. So again, you're not going to get that kind of detail except in the official compilation of the New Mexico law, the statutes behind me and the ones on one source. Um, the, um, I, I don't know what the, the uh, we, I, I say we because the Compilation Commission has been working with the Legislative Council Service on incorporating all of those, on reconciling and compiling all of those. So I'm not sure exactly where we are in finalizing that because this just went into effect last year. But we're close. Um, the, um, I guess I can't reiterate enough um, because we were surprised when we started talking to uh, other state agencies and the like that they were not, not everybody for a while there was using the, uh, the official laws, the NMSA or the one source. Um, it is the only official compilation, complete with the annotations. Uh, the free public uh, website, as I mentioned, has the compilation but not the annotations, so it doesn't provide the complete history of the amendments, and therefore that's where you have the perils of free. That's, that's why free websites and even the free uh, website that, that has the laws don't have the annotations, don't have that uh, reconciling and recompiling of the different sections of law, and it doesn't have that history that sometimes you need to do the kind of research that you do in your, in your practices. So to reiterate uh, the section of law, the um, uh, 1217, that's where these are regarded or recognized as the official compilation. Uh, they're recognized, referred to, and used in all the courts and in all the departments and offices of the state as the official compilation of the statutory law of New Mexico and may be cited as the NMSA 1978. That's what makes them official. We work very closely with the Compilation Commission, with the Advisory Committee. Uh, I'm on the commission itself, and there's a lot of work that has gone into making NMSA what it is now. It uh, has been greatly improved, and I am fairly active with the National Conference of State Legislatures. I serve on the Uniform Law Commission, and there's a certain degree of envy in terms of the fact that we self-publish. The state is responsible for its own compilation of the law, and it works very well. So I encourage you to make sure that you use it, and I'll still be around here for questions later. Thank you very much.